Good morning, guys. It is, let me make sure, is this thing running right? Test, test, yeah, it is. Making sure I'd hate to do a devotional and the mic ain't on. That's happened before. Anyways, it's Sunday night for us, Monday morning for you guys. And I really, really hope you guys um, enjoyed Sunday service. And um, if you didn't, hopefully you got a chance to watch it or you'll get a chance to watch it, you know, now that it's posted. Um, I'm really excited. The fact that we're doing the, it's been a while since I've done a sermon series. Usually I don't do sermon series or it's been a long time since. And um, we're doing for the next seven weeks, starting this Sunday, um, the seven letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. And... um, I'll be honest with you, um, not only is it powerful, not informative, convicting when it has to be, but it's very fun, you know, on my end, because, I mean, I I think that each of these letters of the seven, to the seven churches are, 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 it's fun to, um, it's fun to study, you know, because cities are mentioned, things are mentioned, and there's so much more there. Than, than what you read, because there's so much history, you know, which every city that's mentioned, or this is mentioned, or that's this mentioned, and it's just so fun to uncover this stuff, and, and to kind of lay it all out um, as a sermon, you know, so um, hopefully you got a chance to watch that, guys, and, and uh, I think it'll bless you, I believe that it'll bless you, and, um, you know, um, I just came back from a long drive, I was with Abraham, so... It's a little late, uh, but I didn't want to not do a video, video. Um, but I did want to, um, you know, just just uh, make sure you guys watch that Sunday sermon. Anyways, you know, uh, today was, was a, it was a blessing, to be honest with you. I was a little surprised to, trying to figure out why Sharon and I, because um, the church was extra full this Sunday, and we're trying to figure out why. Uh, It's not a bad problem, but usually it it makes sense when it's full like that. Usually, I mean, usually we're maybe 70% capacity. Uh, Today, it felt like we're like probably 90 and a 90, maybe even 95% capacity. I, I don't know. Usually that happens, you know, Christmas. Um, Resurrection Day or Easter, uh, things like that. And um, so I didn't even realize because, um, you know, I'm sitting right on the front row. So during worship, I'm I'm not looking back, really. And then um, did worship. Pastor Al went up and did the missions and, and uh, the, the tithing. And then Sharon sang a, another last final song. And then I go up. Uh, as I'm about to preach a sermon and I go up there and I turn around and this place is packed, you know, and um, it was, it's a beautiful feeling to be honest with you because we, um, we pour our hearts into, into this church, into the people there. We try to, at the very least, to be honest with you, you know, um, there has been from the beginning, you know, like I said something in the sermon Maybe that's what I want to talk about today. I mentioned in the sermon that the house, the, 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 I'm sorry, the church house of rest started in the basement of a house that I was renting. Not the basement of this house, the house that I was renting in Modesto at the time. And, um, and I say that because even though the first four services were in a banquet room of a hotel, um, I consider the start of House of Rest in the basement because the banquet room was just the banquet room, was a rented room. There was no sound, no nothing, just a couple stacked chairs and this this, uh, podium. So even though it was truly started in a banquet hall, um, but spiritually, I, I feel like it started in the basement of that house. Anyways... And I said something to the effect of that even though we're in a building, 
I've always considered House of Rest to be a house church that just happens to be in a building. I've, I've often um, defined it that way, that we are a house church that happens to be in a building. And, um, and not only that, but even the kickoffs, we have Phoenix House of Rest, which is a house church. And, um, and we have now Spring, Texas with Anthony and Angel, which is a house church, you know. And um, pretty soon, Veronica and Alex, it's not going to start in a house. It's going to start in a restaurant um, that, thank God, that there's a restaurant that's gracious enough that closes uh, on Sundays. So they're allowing them to use uh, their restaurant for um, starting House of Rest Lake Tahoe at least until it grows and they can find a building also. But anyways, um, so I was saying that because there's a lot of times in the growth of House of Rest that it's called growing pains. You know, uh, growing pains are, are uh, when I was in the basement, I had twenty exactly 20 chairs in there. Uh, that's all that fit. And uh, they were kind of slanted. It was kind of like an L. And then I would preach out of the corner in the basement. And then I remember when we started getting 25 people, 23 people showing up for service. And so I found myself not knowing what to do because I only had 20 chairs down there. That's all there was room for. So it's not about, oh, I should go buy more chairs. All I could fit in that basement was 20 chairs. So when it became consistent, um, well, there was always somebody standing. Usually it was husbands. They let their wives sit and their kids sit. And I had, you know, usually four or five men standing through the whole service. Uh, after a few weeks of that, I had to have a meeting. I had to have a meeting and say, hey, guys, um, I need to find a building need to find a building because not only is there standing room only now, how are we supposed to grow? How do we invite people? How are people going to come over knowing that there's not going to be anywhere for them to sit? So um, we went looking for a building. And um, matter of fact, a lot of you don't know, but the building we're in now, that was actually my first building I ever got back in the day. And um, so back then... I got that building, didn't have money to do anything to it. I had a, a portable stage, a PA system, and um, a projector that was just on the stage, sitting on the stage, pointing up to this little projector screen, and some chairs. No air condition. You, know, you guys know it's a warehouse, right? We have three, one, two, three, four air conditions now. Three fans, and it's still hot. So I want you to imagine being no air condition, no insulation. It was insane, right? So um, that that's the building I had. But anyways, my point is this, is that I got blessed, though, with I think it was 120 chairs. The same chairs, I think they were the same style chairs I had. So not only did I have my 20, I got blessed with another 100. So now I have 120 chairs in the building we're in now. Very, very bare bones. And the 25 people that packed my basement, now it looked really empty in that building. And then people started coming. And then it got to, I think it peaked at maybe 50 people. Here's what happened, though is I started to see those that were really, really involved when it was 25 start to step back. And, um, and I started to get nervous because the only way we could pay this building was because of the 25 original people. And they're the ones that started stepping back. And I finally talked to them like, hey, uh, what's going on? You don't seem enthusiastic. You seem like you don't even want to be here. Am I doing something wrong? Like, what's wrong? And... To summarize it, it came down to this, is a couple of the main people that gave said that they never wanted to be in a bigger building. They never wanted to grow. They loved the teaching. They wanted to stay in the basement. They did not want House of Rest to grow. They were just happy with the 20 that we had, and they were like, 
why did you feel like you have to have more than that? And I'm like, I don't feel like, I can't help the fact that there's people showing up. Um, God is not calling us to live in a cave and close the door. There's a whole world out there to reach. And um, eventually, to be honest with you, those people left. And they were the biggest contributors to even helping get this big building. And already this big building could not, it was only 25 people at first. So long story short, it was a two-year lease. And I lost that building within a year. That is why it's a miracle that I'm even in that building now. Because it's still the same owner. And then I didn't know what to do. So then I... I had to close that building, didn't know what to do. And then somebody came. It's a long story. I don't want to take too long. Ended up in a karate school or a martial arts school that happened to close on Sundays. And he told me, because he was also a Christian, he says, listen, I know you lost the building. I don't want you to lose your congregation. You can come to my school on Sundays, set up and tear it down and have service on Sunday. So I did that. And again, uh, you know, uh, it started growing. And that probably fit maybe 60 chairs. Um, and then it was there for a while. And then people got used to it. People, that was their first time. That was the only, they didn't know the other building. New people started coming and, and it grew and people were used to tearing, uh, t uh, putting it up and tearing it down, putting it up, tearing it down. But then um, the guy that owned the martial arts school said, hey, um, in, a, in, in about a month, I'm going to put in this flooring that is like a sponge and I, I can't put chairs anymore because it's going to tear my, my floor because it's a martial arts school. And he goes, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, brother. He was, uh, but you're not going to be able to have service here anymore. And, and he, was, he was a huge blessing. Uh, he, he, huge, huge blessing. And um, so, of course, I understood. I didn't get upset about it. Uh, he had blessed us enough, let us be there for a little over a year. And then went to another building. And so each time, my point is this. I'm not going to sit here and tell you the story about each building. So anyways, went to that building. And then there's more growing pains. Because people didn't like the change. They wanted to be in the karate school. Which is weird. Because a lot of times we get, we get used to our environment. And we don't want to change it. We're afraid of change. And, and then we went from that building. And then um, to the building we had before and back and forth. And, and even so, even now, full circle, I end up back in the building I originally lost, which we're in now. But now I didn't have only 25 people. Now we have 100 plus. So now we could afford it. And thank God the owner um, was gracious enough to give me a chance because I'm the one that broke lease. I couldn't afford it before. Um, so... And then there was a few people, because the last building we were in, we were in there for a few years. It was, it was like one, maybe two-thirds the size. It was really small. Moved into this building. We needed the building. We needed more room. We needed it. And I had a couple people tell me, I like the old building. I want to go back to the old building. I'm just like, we. the last building we had before the one now, again, it was a bunch of guys standing because there was no room for chairs. No room, you know, there's no chairs. There's no more chairs for anybody to sit in. It was so packed. And that's what puts us in a building that we're in now. So, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid of change. And, unfortunately, some people don't want change, you know. And, and I think that's what I got to show these guys, you know, um, in Phoenix. You know, he has a nice little group there in Phoenix, and they're in his house, and it's been over a year and a half now. And unfortunately, what might happen, I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking this into existence, but when they get a building, because eventually they're going to outgrow their house, there's going to be people that aren't happy with that because they wanted to stay there. They don't want to see growth. And, and unfortunately, a lot of times when people don't want to see growth, what they're really, you're, what you're really saying is you don't want to see salvations then. Same thing with uh, Anthony and Angel in, in Spring, Texas. They have 12 chairs and a couch, so I'm guessing they can max out at 16 people. They're just a few weeks in. 
Uh, and from what I understand, this Sunday, yesterday, for you guys, was them four. Eli, his wife, uh, the brother Eli that I met over there, and his daughter. And then um, Chula, eight. And I'm not sure if Anthony's sister went. So it's already eight people. There's 16 seats. If her sis, if his sister went, then that's not that's what seventy percent capacity already in the first few weeks, you know. And people are gonna get used to it, and people are gonna come. And then when it's time for him to get a building, you got to be ready that some people don't don't like it. But that's that's kind of sad because we want to see growth, not for the sake of getting a bigger, 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 bigger church. But for the sake of, we want more people to come to Christ. And we want more people to grow. And in order for more people to grow, you got to have room for that capacity. You know, uh, I've often shared with Sharon that the building we have now, I'm, I'm really comfortable with it. I like it. I don't want to move. Um, I, <laughs> and I've said many times, I'm not, don't, I'm not writing this in stone, but I have said, I will not leave this building unless somebody literally hands us keys and says, here, um, you are now the owners of this building. Other than that, I'm not trying to look for another building, you know. But, you know, today I turned around and I saw it completely packed. And I'm just like, man, what is this? Is it a fluke? Is it next week? Is it going to go back down to 70% capacity? Is it, well, I, I don't know. Did everybody just decide to go to church today? I'm not sure what it is. But I would rather go to double services then try to think ahead and try to get a bigger building. You know, I'm really comfortable where we're at now. Well, I'd probably be more comfortable with another air condition, but that's besides the point. Um, as far as space-wise and the, just the the way it is, the way it looks, the way it feels, I'm really happy with it, you know. But like I said, the day will come. The day will come when where we won't fit, and then what? And let's say we don't fit with double services, then what? Um, every every stage of ministry, there's growing pains. That's all I'm saying. And you got to get used to it. You got to expect it. And you got to get past it and through it. So, but anyways, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. I'll give you a longer devotional tomorrow because it is kind of, I think it's past midnight already. And um, I want to get in, finally feel better. Finally feel 100% to do a bike ride in the morning, so that's what I'm going to be doing. But uh, if I don't go to sleep now, I won't be able to get up early enough, so I won't get a heat stroke or dehydrated. So I want to go early enough where, um, where it's still nice and cool. Anyways, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much, and uh, make sure you comment, hit like, share, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. See you later.